Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2017. <laughs> Seniors, you waited a very long time for this day. I believe the class historian pointed out, starting in eighth grade, it was 900 days of education. So you. You're ready for the diplomas. But today, we have the opportunity to award a diploma to someone who's waited just a little bit longer. I invite senior class president, Grace Hadley Bent, to the podium. Back in the 1950s, there was a young man who attended a number of high schools. And then like many young men of his generation, he enlisted in the United States military. And while he served his country for many years, he completed his high school requirements. And in 1956, he received a form and triplicate that said, you have completed your high school equivalency, period. He had hoped he would be awarded a diploma, but it was explained, schools give diplomas. And so, he was disappointed. He had completed what was needed for that education but like young people everywhere, he worked through the disappointment and continued to do what needed to be done. Eventually, he moved to Yarmouth, he raised his family, and his children came to Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School, and they earned their diplomas. And I think he sometimes thought, I just wish I had that opportunity. And then his grandchildren came to Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School and they received diplomas. And there was that same kind of old thought there nagging away, you know, highly successful man, he served his country, serves his community, he serves his church, but he had always wanted that diploma, the representation of that achievement. And it seems like there's an easy solution. And so, on behalf of Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School, today, we will award a diploma to Mr. Paul L. St. Ange. <laughs> Mr. St. Ange, would you come up? And Mr. St. Ange, our senior class president always has the honor of announcing the name of those receiving a diploma. Mr. Paul L. St. Ange.
Our students are used to being photographed, Mr. St. Ange. And seniors. <laughs> <laughs> and now, seniors, we celebrate your successes, your achievements, your accomplishments. You've earned this day. It's about taking care of business, getting it done, doing your best, and you've certainly done all of those things. Education, it's not a solo venture. It's about teamwork. Many of you started your educational career in preschool, and therefore, that's a long time ago, and there were those day care teachers and those preschool teachers, people helping you along, you went up through the years. There were educators and all kinds of people working with you. Elementary school, middle school, high school, teachers, administrators, support staff, cafeteria folks who made sure you had good nutritious meals, our staff that keeps our buildings clean. There's a whole range of hundreds of people all about providing the education. Representatives from our faculty are here today in their regalia, symbolically representing everyone on the certified staffs in our school districts, on our staffs and our supports. They're representing that entire team because we're excited that you're here today. So thank you to the faculty. And by the way, we have an incredible faculty. I'm biased, but it's true. I don't know of any group of people who works harder or longer or goes above and beyond to make sure that young people, everybody has that shot to be here today. And I really can't thank them enough because when I talk to other school principals, it's not the same everywhere. Parents, if you're a parent, stand up. <laughs> Seniors, come on. <laughs> parents are the original educators the primary educators. They not, may not be doing the academics as much as we do, but they're certainly doing all those other elements of education that are critical, you know, character, integrity. How do you do things right? How do you fix it when you make a mistake? 24-7, parents are there. And part of that job description is to drive you a little crazy. And that's what they do. As an experienced parent myself, however, I noticed my children returned the favor. <laughs> and while I was lucky enough to award my three children their diplomas, in one case I was a little worried for a while. But anyway, that's a different discussion <laughs> for another day. I also want to thank the citizens of our communities because education is absolutely a vital venture, but it's an expensive one because it's people. The bricks and the mortar are important and they cost a fair amount of money, but nothing in life is really worth remembering 
or focusing on unless it's the people. And it's the people that make this happen. But I thank our communities for providing what we need so we could have a sunny graduation day today. I try to always capture that essence of a class, you know, this class, that class. What's the things that stand out? And what do you remember? And, you know, sometimes there's a few larger than life characters that seem to draw everyone's attention. And I always worry in a way that's like, what about the, you know, all the 180 other kids who are great people doing things? They often don't get recognized as much. And other classes seem to have different kinds of personalities and personas. And yet I look at your class and the first thing that I feel I see all the time is you're not about the talking or the bragging, you're about the doing. You come in and you take care of business, so to speak. It's almost Belichickian. You do your jobs. And whether that's in the classroom, whether that's on the playing fields, concert band, tech labs, the art studios, you work, you try to excel, and you succeed. And there's not a lot of talk about it. It's not a lot of show off stuff, which is the ultimate good thing in life. Because you know, it's about what we do that helps define who we are. And you're the class that I'm always looking at going, wow, what are they, look what they've accomplished, look what they've accomplished, look what they've accomplished. And it feels sometimes, not that we take it for granted, but quite frankly, I feel I get spoiled because so many successful things are going on here. And that's about you and the teachers working with you. The academic realm, Three people with a grade point average higher than 4.0, nine students above a 3.75, the infamous 94. 24 students have a GPA higher than 3.6. That competition, if you will, looks to me to be a pretty friendly competition, but you're driven. And that's a good thing. You're driven to do well. I see people helping each other do better. That's incredible. 84% of you say you've reported. You're going on to college. For some of you, you're still trying to decide which one, what's the better fit, what's the better package deal. But 84% said you're going off to school. Bentley, Bridgewater State, Bryant, Cape Cod Community College, Colby Sawyer, Davidson, Elms, Endicott, Florida State, Harvard, Mass College of Liberal Arts, Mass Maritime, Quinnipiac, Rensselaer, Roger Williams, St. Michael's, Springfield, Stonehill, Syracuse. UMaine, UMass, Boston, UMass, Amherst, UMass, Dartmouth, UMass, Lowell, University of New Hampshire, University of Rhode Island, Westfield State, and the list goes on and on and on. Did I say Harvard twice? First time in DY history, two students accepted to Harvard. Wonderful people. <laughs> Cindy and Izzy. And some of you are going on to specialized training because that's what you want to do. You know, what's that skill? Maybe it's being a steam engine engineer. Maybe it's other things. But people are pursuing technical training because that's the passion. And again, I look at your class and think, God, you got it. When Ms. Fornoff was announced as Educator of the Year yesterday, which was incredible, by the way. Thank you. And <laughs> she reminded you, don't settle. And I don't think you, you will. And that's a good thing. You're going to work at it. And you're going to do the things you've done here. You know, what are those kinds of things? Beyond the, beyond the classroom, we've got the academics. Five years in a row, state champions, marching band and guard. Where else does that happen? That's incredible here. <laughs> that championship went to percussion group over the years. You have all been involved in the five-year builds of these programs. Some of you in this class were a little younger when you went to that Apple Blossom Parade Festival in D.C. and you cleaned up, you swept the field. Okay, color guard, 11 state championships, come on. Who does that? Unbelievable. <laughs> One of my favorite D.Y. stories is every year, it's the second to last day of school. You know, people kind of happy. We've done the half day of exams. The great philosophical debate begins in households throughout Dennis and Yarmouth. 
Like, do I really have to go to step up day? And all of those things are taking place. And usually that day, it's like very exciting. I get to go home around 4.30 or 5 in the afternoon going, hoo hoo, you know, tomorrow's the easy day. We're hoping to break 90% attendance. I wish we could. Anyway, so come to step up day. But anyway, going home, going like, wow, you know, the year, it's a wrap. And every year, out in front of the school, on the second to the last day of school, are the kids in the color guard starting to work on next year's routine. You are a machine. That is incredible. <laughs> so incredible music program, jazz, we got it all, obviously. The scholastic arts every year, anybody knows anything about our arts program, incredibly talented artists. They work with our teachers who are also artists. They work with art mentors in the community. They get those gold and those silvers and those honorable mentions year in, year out at the scholastic competitions. Seniors, in your time here, you've been at those, uh, let's see, how many times have we swept Law Day? How many things, awards have we won at the Mass Theater Festival? Constantly placing well with the Voice of Democracy, the Lions Club, and all those things. Seniors, uh, Chloe, Jasmine, where are they going? The New Englands. They placed at the top levels of the state last week. In a little while, it's like, it's been wonderful. Thank you for coming. And they're going to grab those diplomas, and then they're going to throw. It's incredible. Cam Mazzoni, MIA, a recognition. Everybody goes, wow, Cam, what an incredible tennis player. And the neat combination is he plays hockey, too. So the MIA at the state level recognized that. That's incredible. Those kinds of things happen here at DUI. You know? And so when I think of your class and sort of what's the legacy and what are they about, I'm a data-driven guy. That's an educator thing, looking at scores, looking at results. Okay, on June 1st, there were 980 students at Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School. Over 125 of those students have state or championship jackets, league championship jackets, and that's not including the specialized awards for Poetry Out Loud, the Speech Contest, Peace Poetry, Law Day, Voice of Democracy. It's not including some of the special academic awards and recognition students received. So the math is simple. As a senior class, under your leadership, we have a school where one out of every eight students in this school has a championship jacket for something they've achieved. That's incredible. You've worked hard and you've worked well. And there's other champions, we all know. You more than anyone else probably knows about some of your friends. Uh, they've had different kind of challenges than many of us. And they're still here today. They made it. We get resilience here at DY. Our faculty helps build resilience with students. We have strong students who overcome incredible adversity sometimes to be here today. Later, if you look at some of us and you see tears or you see people getting pretty excited, it's because there's some background stories that sometimes, are, quite frankly, are miraculous. You know, even to the point of a staff member who moved away last year uh, asking someone to live stream when her special student comes across the stage today, so she can check that out. So they'll do that. That's what our educators do here. We invest in our young people because they deserve it. They've earned it. We're impressed by them. You guys are incredible. And it's such a, a year of random memories. Uh, it's amazing. This is the class. You know, most classes, senioritis starts April-ish, and it becomes epidemic. Then juniors have an identity crisis, and they start kind of joining in. This senior class worked right to the end before exams. Actually, maybe many of you <laughs> worked hard. Okay, some of you. Okay, let's just put that out there. But I knew something was up when it's the day, I think it's like the last day before exams. And I see Alex Robley looking at books in the library with this guy's about feng shui and interior design or something. And I wasn't sure what was up with that. But Alex, if I ever need a desk or other furniture moved, I know where to go. <laughs> All kinds of other memories. But I guess if I had to pick one memory of the year that, for me, summarizes you as a group, and that's always fraught with peril because we're all individuals. I don't know, it was about February, maybe March. It's lunch duty, 
I'm a connoisseur of lunch duty, by the way. And one of our students in the specialized program was clearly having a bad day. And she looked sad. She looked upset. Looked like she might have been in a little pain that day. And so people, you know, going through the lunch line and everybody's going about their business. And then, you know, Sierra sees the little girl's having some troubles. So she gets out of the lunch line, and she goes over, and she spends about a minute and a half kind of talking to the person, chatting, telling jokes. And uh, so, you know, I'm watching all that. The student eventually kind of smiles a little bit, starts laughing. Sierra just jumps back in line, goes about her business. Everybody else was doing their thing. Nobody was, you know, forming a crowd, watching what's going on. Because everybody was taking care of things. But that wasn't a random act of kindness. That's the thing you all do to each other all the time. When I say to some classes, take care of each other, take care of yourselves, it's kind of like, oh, I hope some of that sinks in. You're the class that's done that, which is why you're here today, and which is why you're so incredibly successful. I don't have to give you special advice to how to make a difference in the world. Be you. You'll do fine. It's actually been a joy and an honor being your principal, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, class of 2017. And now, I'd like to introduce the representative of the Dennis Yarmouth Regional School District Committee, Mr. Joseph Tierney. Mr. Tierney. Thank you, Mr. Jenks. Good morning. No, great morning. It is a beautiful morning. It is truly an honor to speak to you all, Mr. Jenks, Mrs. Woodbury, faculty, staff, parents, and you, the class of 2017 at Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School. On behalf of the Dennis Yarmouth Regional School Committee, congratulations. You've done a great job, and we are so proud of your successes. Today is the culmination of 13 years of hard work. Some of you have been in the district for all 13 years, some have not. That's irrelevant. You're here. It is the end of one chapter and the beginning of a new exciting chapter in your life. Parents, savor this time as this chapter in your son or daughter's life is coming to a close. Look forward to what's ahead. It will be exciting, I'm sure. You were, students, you were guided through the whole way by teachers, coaches, counselors that are among the very best in the state. Mr. Jenks pointed that out. That's what sets DY apart from all the other school districts on the Cape. From Mr. Jenks, all the principals that you had in the district, down to the, the lunch crew at the school. Also seeing Ronaldo in the morning, smiling and laughing at you as you walked in the door. That's always a great sight. The entire staff of the district cared and sincerely, sincerely believed in you. They pushed you to be the very best person that you wanted to be. They believed that even in tough times that you could pers persevere and succeed. Today, after all the pomp and circumstance, take a few minutes to thank them. Their hours of dedication to your success and getting you to this point to sit in the lagoon are worth a handshake and a thank you. Another group of adults that deserve acknowledgement and praise are your parents and guardians. Their early morning wake-up calls or screams upstairs to get you out of bed and to school pushing you to do the best when all you really want to do is just chill out. All the practices, games, performances, late nights, early mornings were because they wanted the best for you. A hug and a thank you are all really nice things, nice gestures, but I have a better idea. I'd like you guys to stand up, if you could, and turn around to your parents or guardians and give them a standing ovation. Thank you. 
Thank you, parents. <laughs> that was the physical education portion of the presentation. <laughs> I was looking for an appropriate quote or reference to leave with you today. I was looking through Google and other online references, and they just gave me a big headache. I stumbled upon a book that had the perfect poem. The book was the Class of 1986 yearbook. 31, <laughs> 31 years ago, I was sitting in the same seats you were. Some of us were listening to game six of the Boston Celtics versus Houston Rockets game in the NBA Finals. They were listening from our FM radios. <laughs> Ironically, on the back of this yearbook was a poem entitled Success by Ralph Waldo Emerson. I'd like to read that to you now. Take into account this poem was written in the late 1800s. What is success? To laugh often and much. To win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or redeemed social condition. To know even one life is breathed easier because of you have lived, this is this is to have succeeded. Graduates, each one of you in the sea of green before me has succeeded. That is why you're sitting here. Keep succeeding. Learn from your mistakes. Keep your head high and carry on with what you believe in. Take what you've learned from your years here at DY to be one that finds the best in others and let others see the best in you. You may be the only ray of hope in someone's life someday. Do not let the idea of success be dictated by society, social media, Snapchat, or the number of likes you get on Facebook. Success comes from the heart. When you work hard and try from the heart, I guarantee you, you will succeed. Think back over the past four or five years. Think of your, one of your best accomplishments. Was it easy to achieve? Did it take failure, failure at first to achieve success? Did you put your heart and soul into it? Did you feel really good when you accomplished your goal, no matter how big or how small it was? As you sat out on your own paths, remember those that supported, loved, and believed in you. Remember, too, that everyone has hard times, and that it is more important that you got up rather than that did you felt. Remember the sand in your shoes and the salt air in the morning. Remember to make people smile and laugh. When today is over, you will become alumni of Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School. Know that Dolphin Pride will forever be part of who you are. Those of us here will not soon forget you. You are the class of 2017. Congratulations to each one of you. Thank you. Now I'd like to call up uh, Superintendent Carol Woodbury to the podium. Good morning. Members of the Dennis Yarmouth Regional School Committee, and there are several here today, Principal Jenks, faculty, our town officials, thank you for being here, community members, parents, families, friends. We are so grateful that you joined us today for the 2017 Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School commencement exercises. A special thank you to our two communities and our families for their partnership in getting these young people to this very special day graduates of the class of 2017. It's my honor to offer you my heartfelt congratulations. What a glorious day you have for your graduation. Woo. 
It's truly a great day in Dolphin Land. I love Senior Week. This is the last day of Senior Week. For me, it's the best week of the year. I get to see you all together as a class, and at the same time, day after day, I'm reminded of your individual accomplishments. As superintendent, I've had the privilege of watching you grow up. I've had mem I have many memories of your individual accomplishments in elementary school, remember? In middle school and in high school. My heart has been filled with pride so many times as I've watched you succeed. However, success has not always come easily, as others have said. At times, there were struggles to overcome. And in those moments of struggle, the triumphs were even sweeter. Congratulations on all you've achieved. And as Mr. Jenks said earlier, it's not uncommon to hear people who work in schools talk about the personality of a class. This is really about the interplay between the individuals and how their skills and talents and personalities work together to achieve results. Over, over the course of this senior week, the personality of this class was so clear to me. You're a class of quiet, graceful leaders. Now, what does that mean? Well, I found an interview with a man named Joseph Badarico. He's a member of the Harvard Business School faculty. And during this interview, he does an excellent job of explaining what I mean by quiet, graceful leaders. In his interview, he says this about quiet leaders. They don't have the spotlight and publicity on them. They think of themselves modestly. They don't often think of themselves as leaders, but they are acting quietly, effectively, with political astuteness to basically make things somewhat better, sometimes much better than they would otherwise be. Later in the interview, Mr. Badarico goes on to say, if you look behind lots of great heroic leaders, you find them doing lots of quiet, patient work themselves. Sometimes a few people were aware of what they did. Sometimes nobody is aware of what they did. There aren't medal ceremonies, and often the people involved don't think they would deserve one if medals were being given out. But there are often people, I found in the cases I looked at carefully, who find that some situation or problem or difficulty affecting a person, affecting an organization, is really bothering them, gets under their skin, while other people would say, hey, why are you getting carried away about this? They care about it. They commit themselves and they keep working tenaciously. So over that period of time, they find some ways to just get stuff done. This is a class of quiet, graceful leaders. You are modest. You see what needs to be done, and you do it, without a lot of fanfare or need for recognition. You do things you care about, and you work tirelessly to make a difference. You're compassionate, kind, and gracious. All this makes you a class of quiet, graceful leaders. At Senior Last Assembly, someone said that they had no doubt that this class would make a difference. I agree wholeheartedly with that statement, because you have already made a difference. That's just who you are. And as long as you're true to who you are, you will continue to make a difference in the world. Now, one final story and a thought to take with you. Back when I was teaching kindergarten and first grade, on the last day of school, all the teachers would gather out in the bus circle to wave goodbye to our students for the summer. In some ways, there was a sense of relief that the year was over but there was also this melancholy feeling right inside. As educators, we become connected to our students. We spend a lot of time caring about their well-being. As such, your class becomes like a little family. And you know that despite having new students ne next year, you will really miss the students who are leaving you. I've had those same feelings throughout senior week. You've touched my life and given me many moments of happiness and pride through your subtle, gracious style in the academics, the arts, in sports, 
in your service to your communities, to those less fortunate than yourself, and to each other. And for the times that I was walking through your halls and you just said, hi, Mrs. Woodbury, that made me happy. You will be missed. Thank you for all you've done as leaders who will continue to make a difference in the world. Take this bit of Chinese wisdom with you. A leader is best when people barely know he or she exists. When his or her work is done, his or her aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. Congratulations, class of 2017, and as always, go Dolphins! And now, it's my honor to introduce the number two student in the class of 2017. Grade point average of 4.1089. Would Camden Cam, I mean Cameron Cam Mazzoni, join me at the podium. Congratulations to Cam. Good morning and thank you all. Class of 2017, today is a huge day. How are we all feeling? That's what I love to hear. All right, for starters, I'd just like to thank the DY faculty and staff for hosting graduation year after year and making it such a memorable event. I'd like to thank all of my teachers and my wonderful guidance counselor, Mr. Rico, for all the knowledge and wisdom they pass on to me during my time at DY. I'd like to thank my parents and family for their unconditional support throughout this journey. I want to thank my peers and friends for making my experience at DUI such a memorable one and for giving me all the memories that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. Special shout out goes to Hayes, Harney, Pat, Jalen, Neve, Bella, Izzy, and Liz. It's been a real treat with you guys and uh, I'm sure we'll keep it going during the summer. Lastly, to my ambassadors, I cannot thank you all enough for being like a second family to me. I love you all. Although I could give praise all day, today is all about this wonderful group of graduating seniors that sits right in front of me. In order to give you an idea of how amazing this group of kids is, I want to share some facts with you about DUI's class of 2017. Athletically, we're studs. There's just no other way to put it. <laughs> Chloe Aresey holds the Cape record in shot put, the school record in discus, and placed second in the New England Championships in the winter. I don't know if many of us know this, but Lindsey Gallagher holds a world championship for karate in the Dominican Republic. The core squad of the three-time dodgeball champion, State Chumman, belonged to the class of 2017. And not to mention, we have the number two ranked tennis player in the state, Trevor Work. Many of us belong to the Color Guard, which has been recognized as the best Color Guard in the state for an, for an astonishing 11 years in a row. And for the cherry on top, we have Matthew Slovak, who's just an all-around good guy. <laughs> what more could you possibly ask for? And for those of you wondering, what about academics? Well, two students in DY's class of 2017 will be having Harvard, well, sorry, we'll be attending Harvard University next year. Enough said. <laughs> now, I know most of you are sitting there in amazement, thinking Harvard University is the best school in the nation. Well, let, let me tell you something, it's not. Stanford University is, and my rationale behind this conclusion is solely due to the fact that they denied me. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, I could brag about this grade all weekend. However, in order to keep this speech relatively short, I'm going to share with you some anecdotes about the class of 2017 and what a typical day is like living amongst this legendary class for me. So you know, I typically arrive at DUI around 7.15 and park as far away as humanly possible from my friends Jalen and Eve just as a safety precaution. <laughs> it's A block and I find myself in psychology where I have the honor and privilege to sit behind Danny Lavalley, who never ceases to amaze me in how many selfies a girl can take during a single class period. <laughs> 
A block ends and I find myself make, taking the treacherous walk to AP Biology, just praying that Miss T won't assign another one of her infamous biozone packets. Even though the walk is treacherous, it's also one of my favorite things to do each and every morning because it allows me to see some of my favorite aspects of the class of 2017. As I walk down the hall, I see Mikey flirting with several girls <laughs> and Alex ripping the heart out of a fetal pig in his anatomy lab, just as he does to each and every one of his opponents on the football field every Friday night. I see Pat McDowell swagged out in his newest outfit, and I see my favorite couple, Harney and Jalen, laughing together in the hallway. Just when I think that AP Bio is impossible and that Miss T will definitely be the death of me, I find myself walking down to AP Calculus, taught by the omniscient Miss Maycomb. It only takes about two minutes into the class for Cam Hayes to have absolutely no idea what's going on. <laughs> and it's at this point when he makes a feeble excuse to try to get up doing the rest of the work. Believe me, it never works. <laughs> ben Volpe challenges Miss Maycomb to a daily push-up contest because he cannot handle his initial devastating loss to a, to a middle-aged woman. <laughs> Izzy and I pretend that we know what we're doing to let everyone know we're still smart, but in reality, we have no clue what's going on. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself here. She is going to Harvard after all. As the bell rings, it signals the end of C block, and Hayes and I rush out of the classroom as fast as we possibly can so that Miss Maycomb can't chase us down for the numerous homework assignments that were due two weeks prior. As I make my way up to the 400 wing for my final class, I once again see Mikey chatting it up with the ladies, and I take note of Bella and Julia dancing and singing to the latest hip-hop jam that they've annoyed Mr. T with the last 84 minutes. <laughs> it's this form of daily amusement from the class of 2017 that puts a smile on my face and gets me excited for the last block of the day, Spanish with Mrs. Ross. Now, if there are two things that I can count on occurring during a Spanish class in Mrs. Ross, it's number one, that Dan Castelloni definitely will be criti criticized for either his work ethic and or his handwriting, <laughs> and number two, that there will be some point in the class when each and every student is nodding his or her head in acknowledgement, pretending that we have any idea what Mrs. Ross is actually saying. <laughs> After another 84 minutes, the final bell rings and the school day comes to a conclusion. As I make my way around the hallway bend at the guidance department, I'm warmly, ga or warmly welcomed by my gathered peers. Ten minutes of chatting flies by and we all head our separate ways until the next day when we have the honor and privilege of doing it all over again. And so another average yet spectacular day at DY comes to a close for the class of 2017. So at this point, a lot of you may be wondering why I would choose to describe my normal day at DY during a graduation speech or why I would choose to drop the names of many seemingly random people who I've learned to call my friends. Well, the memories I've shared and the people I've mentioned are all incredibly important. You see, to me, high school has not been all about academics and athletics, even though, let's be honest, I've killed both. <laughs> the most important aspect of high school to me has involved the friends I've made and the lessons each and every person has taught me. Each and every individual mentioned has taught me a lesson that I will take with me for the rest of my life. Danny LaValle. Danny LaValle has taught me the importance of a smile and how in the morning can change the outlook of an entire day. Thank you, Danny. If all I am 60 years from now is a happy man, then I will consider my life a monumental success. Although I did not know Izzy Shaw at an early age, her incredible story in beating cancer has taught me the essential nature of fighting through adversity and never giving in. Class of 2017, I can promise you that in the future there will be dark days ahead of us all. And I hope it's during this time that you learn or are taught a lesson similar to the one that Izzy has taught me. Mikey Hollister, good guy, has taught me the, the power of charisma and exemplified how it can make everyone around him a better person. And as I mentioned before, with their horrendous driving skills, Neve Delaney and Jalen Moriarty have taught me where not to park at DY each and every morning. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. <laughs> Isabella Avalar and Elizabeth Johnson have taught me what true fun looks like and the, import the importance of knowing that someone always has your back. From Miss Maycomb, well, I was gifted the honor of finding out that I am truly atro atrocious at calculus. Lastly, Pat McDowell, Cam Hayes, and Jack Harney have gifted me the lesson that family is not necessarily always biological and can sometimes be chosen. From them, I've learned that there's nothing in the world that is more important than friendship and the memories friends can make together. I love you all for that. Being a member of the class of 2017 for five years, I've had the chance to develop my own distinct relationships with an impressive number of individuals in the grade. In fact, the people that I thought I would never approach and become friends with have actually proven to be the most genuine and fun people to be around. There's an underrated power and privilege in saying hello to someone you'd usually not talk to. You see, it provides you the opportunity to gain a perspective that may have never been acquired otherwise. 
That's the biggest piece of advice I can give to the class of 2017. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and create new friendships. You'll be surprised what you will learn about yourself and about life. You see, if there's one thing I've learned throughout my years at DUI, it's that friends and people we meet should never be taken for face value. There's always something more. There's always some lesson you can learn from others in the way they live their lives, and these lessons can and will serve you well in the future. As we go out into the real world, I hope we all remember the class of 2017, the memories we've made, and most importantly, the friendships we've built during our time at DUI. I say this because at the end of the day, we aren't going to remember what grade we got on that particular test, but we will remember the people and friends who shaped our experiences during high school. I'd like to leave you all with a quote from Maya Angelou that says, quote, at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or did. They will remember how you made them feel, end quote. Thank you, class of 2017, for leaving me with the lasting impression of such an excellent high school experience. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and this class will always have a special place in my heart. Thank you. Well done. Our valedictorian, the number one student in the class of 2017, has earned a grade point average of 4.2466. Impressive. It is my honor to introduce this year's valedictorian, Cindy Lee. Hey class of 2017, it's insane, almost surreal standing up here right now because I never thought that senior year would come so fast. It's like one second we were just little freshmen navigating the halls and looking up at all the seniors, well, looking down if you're Dylan Grant. <laughs> like, whoa, they all have their lives together. And the next second, boom, we are those seniors. Although, disclaimer, Seniors are probably the farthest people from having their lives together. <laughs> I'd like to say that coming up with this speech was easy. That I sat down, reflected on our class and high school, and all the aspects of our lives are going to change, and just let it flow. But the truth is, it was hard. Harder than fighting senioritis. <laughs> everything I wrote, everything I wanted to say, just didn't seem like enough or just seemed too cliche. I couldn't put into words the torment of wanting to start the next chapter of our lives while also wanting to savor each and every moment we have with the friends who have helped us become who we are. I couldn't put into words the love and appreciation I have for the friends who have given me so much joy and strength. If there's one thing I've learned in high school, it's that you don't need a ton of friends. A few quality friends who celebrate your victories with you and commiserate your failures is way more than enough. I couldn't put into words how proud I am of all of us for making it this far. So after discarding various cliche speech drafts, I decided I'd write a poem. I'm no poet, but I figured this way I'd have an excuse if it came out horrible. <laughs> so here goes. Congratulations, class of 2017, class of artists, musicians, and everything in between. We didn't think this day would ever come where we would go from DY student to DY alum. Now look around at the people to your left and to your right, and I really gotta say, it's quite a sight. These are the people we've known all our lives, who have celebrated our victories and commiserated our nosedives. Some may say that our class didn't give 100%, but I for one think that what our class didn't do was relent. We were the first class when eighth grade could come to DY. Even as eighth graders, some of us were willing to give high school a try. The oldest class to still get iPads. What can I say where class keeps up with the fads? The friendships in this class run abnormally deep. These are the friendships that we'll want to keep. One thing our class doesn't lack is support, cheering one another on at each and every sport. As my mediocre poem finally draws to an end, 
I'd like to give a few shout outs to those that I call friend. Brianna Cologne, thanks for inspiring in me optimism and compassion. Molly Ortiz, you're a role model with your boundless passion. Lucas, Marissa, and Bri, your friendships are something I cannot buy. You all have taught me how a true friend should act. Whenever I needed something, you guys had me backed. In this series of shoutouts, there are some more people I can't forget. To my family, I am forever in your debt. Mom and Dad, thanks for always pushing me to succeed. To my little sister Maggie, you are the friend and study buddy I will always need. To my cousins who are more excited for my accomplishments than I, to say that I could have better cousins is a lie. To the DY faculty, I must also say a few thanks. First and foremost, Principal Ken Jenks. <laughs> Your smile and camera are two things you are never without. That you bring positivity to this school is without a doubt. My guidance counselor, Mr. Rico, I cannot thank enough. Without you, the entire college process would be unbelievably rough. Great teachers I have had galore. Terry and Rice, O'Connor, Brennan, Madame, and more. You all have taught with such aplomb that all I can say is, you guys are the bomb. <laughs> and thanks, I raised my tennis racket in the air to the best sports team and coach out there. In tennis, love may mean zero, but each and every one of you is my hero. At this point, I'm about to run out of rhymes and time. So instead of giving my two cents, I'll give a dime. To succeed, you gotta give it your all. Even when you fail, you gotta stand tall. But no matter how hard you may try to succeed, there's something more than drive and ambition that you need. Don't forget the people who have had your back. From them draw strength. That is something they will never lack. If you want something, go for it. Give it a shot. It's better to do and regret than have it forever be a thought. One thing I tried hard not to be was cliche, but these words of wisdom got their way. That we're all about to leave, you all must feel so glad. But it's okay to admit we'll all be a little sad. This is a place where we've learned and we've laughed. So take a moment to look back at your handicraft. Now's the time for us all to be loud. But don't forget, this is also a time to be proud. Now that my graduation poem is just about done, I realize I forgot something crucial, a pun. <laughs> As seniors, we've seen your amazing achievements. On this, I don't think we'd have any disagreements. The class of 2017 is a 27 team. Even as we go our separate paths, we'll never forget our regime. I should probably end this before I start to cry. Class of 2017, congrats and goodbye. Wait, I don't want to end on a sad note, nor do I want to end with a cliche quote. I guess what I'm saying is our class is pretty swell. So class of 2017, congrats and farewell. <laughs> Cindy, Cam, those are both incredible. That was great. Oh, a flyover. <laughs> and now, the recognition <laughs> of our graduates. I invite President Grace Hadley Bent to return to the podium. Arsal Afzal. <laughs> Tobiah Grace Agurkis. <laughs> Alicia Albi. Abigail Kelly Anderson. Isabella Dumont Avalar. Christina Baker.
Mia Baroni. Brayden Michael Barrett. Christopher Basili. Melina Banky. Joseph Bryant Bellinger. Philip Benison. Felicia Blackwell. Isabel Brazil. Abigail Antonia Brown. Ryan Burke. Darian Canberra. Kyle Campbell. Eduardo Cardoso. Lucas James Carter. Daniel Castelloni. Isabel Shavs. Amy Clifford. Brianna Colon. Owen Colvin. Travis Coppinger. Juliana Casaborden. Megan Christine Coyle. Kirsten Crahan. Sanga Rose Crossley. Olivia Ellen Kroll. Olivia Renee Danowitz. Deslin Dawkins. Neve Delaney. Rafael De Oliveira. Austin DiGiolorimo. Sierra Dawn Dobbs. Duranje Dobson. Ryan Downs. Jada Edwards. Chelsea Lynn Ellis. Melanie Ellis. Chloe Erisi. Natasha Esquiperi. James David Erton. William Erton. Helen Evangelista. Hans Fonfon. Samantha Karen Feinstein. Corey Samantha Fellows. Bridget Foss. Lindsay Ann Gallagher. Patrick Garcia. Jasmine Nicole Gomes. Yeah. 
Michael Gonzalez Hess. Dylan Grant. Alexa Mackenzie Green. Jillian Greiner. Savannah Griffin. Christopher Wanakiza. Gabriela Guimares. Jack Harney. Liria Hay. Cameron Hayes. James Healy. Michael Patrick Healy. Michelle Brenna Healy. Jacob Carl Heilman. Odalise Herrera Perez. Jessica Holbrook. Michael John Hollister. Fred Horrigan. Elizabeth Airy Johnson. Timothy Johnson. Emanuela Joseph. Rose Bertha Joseph. Michael Julian. Hunter Kelleher. Brian Kelly. Vangel Coat. Sean Labonte. Talia Laurel. Danielle Rose Lavalley. Alexa Charlotte Lawrence. Tanique Zaria Lawrence. Devin Lee. Brady Leidner. Cindy Lee. I know a Lorenzo. Ortavius Lovett. Marissa Lynch. DMA Maddox. Madison Miranda. Marina Marceline. Kaylee Ann Marks. Jessica Matthews. Hamden Mazzoni. Yeah, nice 
Patrick McDowell. Jasmine McFarland. Jaylene Love McNamara. Jeffrey McNamara. Moses McNamara. Trayvon Wilson Mendez. Gabriel Mendonca. Brandon Millward. Dariano Moore. Jalen Brooke Moriarty. Hannah Christina Morse. Shane Muse. Haley Mullen. Rachel Mayette. Nolan Napolitano. Tien Nguyen. Julia Nickel. Molly Ortiz. Julia Marie Paini. Harsh Kumar Patel. Kenneth Jatin Kumar Patel. Harrison Paul. Thomas Pecorero. Jack Peterson. Joao Mateus Pinto. Zachary Poole. Dylan Reed. Michaela Richardson. Alex Robles. Amelia Renee Rubin. Samantha Scott. Kenneth Charles Schaffer. Yeah. Isabella Mary Shaw. <laughs> Brianna Shirley. <laughs> Madison Isabel Slingerland. Matthew Dylan Slovak. Alexis Smith. Jolene Souza. Jada Stanley. Mallory Stedman. Burton Stevens. Thomas Sullivan.
Peter Maxwell Sumner. Sierra Taylor. Alana Tenti. Tristan Travers. Casey Lynn Coelho. Elizabeth Trinidad. Michael Van Riel. Benjamin Volpe. Abigail Walsh. Victoria Wonko. Mary Catherine Warner. Ryan Wheel. Tanner Weiss. Kiara Watley. Tiara Watley. Brad and Williams. Zachary Williams. Trevor Sullivan Work. Grace Hadley Bent. I present to you the graduates of 2017. Well earned. Well done. Mr. Pendleton, if you please.
feel free to watch the cap toss.